like me, if you're able to do so. We love to start, how good to start your day with worship, isn't it? And there's great joy in doing that together. I'm just reminded of the psalm where it says, for He is a great God and He does marvellous deeds. You alone are God. And that's what we're doing this morning. We are bringing praise and worship to the one true God, the one who is worthy of all our praise and all our adoration. Why don't you turn your hearts and your minds towards Him. Praise Him for all He is. Lift Him high above your circumstance. And we're going to worship Him together today. Generations fall 
falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. All have gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest your name stands above the all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above the all and the angels cry
Yes, Lord, this morning we declare that it is Your Name that stands above all else. All the other things that would consume us, that would take up brain space, that would take up all our time. Father, Your Name stands above all those things. And this morning where we need to, God, we wanna put You back on the throne of our life. God, the places that we haven't let You into or we have tried to withhold from You. Lord, this morning, help us recognise in You that You carry that far better than we ever could because You're the King. We thank You, God. We praise You this morning for who You are. Powerful God. Amen. Hey, well, I'm gonna invite you to take a seat. Right now we're gonna take some time together in communion. So if you're online, why don't you just take a minute right now to go and grab something that resembles the, the bread and the juice that we're gonna be uh, taking together in just a minute. But I love that this time of communion causes us to come and reflect. Causes us to come and reflect on God's great gift of salvation, on the sacrifice that Jesus has made that He would wash, that would wash us clean of sin, that would cast our sins as far as the east is from the west, that we would be washed white as snow at the forefront. That is what we take this meal of communion to remind ourselves of. It's a hope for the here and now, and it's a, a hope for eternity as well. And as we sit in this season that we're in as a church of prayer and fasting, I know that we're all fasting different things and we're all praying for different things. We're all hearing from the Lord about different things. He's speaking to us differently. Yet the unity that we have as we come together for communion is incredible. As we are so different, communion, this space of communion brings us together. And as we come together in this prayer, this season of prayer, I'm just reminded of how Jesus taught us to pray when He lived here on earth and He used the Lord's Prayer to teach us how to pray. Well, I'm gonna read that in a minute, but the part of that prayer that really has been sitting with me is this idea of your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And your kingdom come is this prayer that God would reign and God would rule in our hearts, in our lives, in our world, it's this recognition that the Kingdom of God is something that we can play a part in and pray for in the here and now. Yet it is also something that we hope for in the future. And when we pray your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, it gives us this opportunity to realign our hearts again with God's and realign our will again with God's. And this space of communion, this communion table, at this table is everything that we need to do that. You know, in this space, God fills us with strength. He fills us with encouragement. He fills us with the joy of getting to do that together. You might be online, but we are doing this together, taking this meal together. And there's, there's two... Um, just two senses that I feel God's calling us to, and you might resonate with one uh, more than the other today or both of them, but I feel like God wants to remind us to sit in this space with gratitude, that He would fill our hearts with gratitude for what He has done, that we would never let this communion meal become dull or rote or routine, but that we would be reminded each time of the sacrifice that Jesus made and what that means for us here and for the future. So you might just need to open your heart and just sit in gratitude as we take this meal together. The other thing I believe that God's saying is this might be an opportunity for you to surrender your will again and to be reminded that you, we want to be people who have our hearts and our wills aligned with that of God. And that's how we're gonna see His kingdom come here on earth as we walk with Him, as we walk in step with Him and in obedience with Him. So as you take that meal, be reminded to sit in gratitude. Be reminded to surrender those parts of you that you may not have let God in, or you may have just gradually taken them back, but He wants to sit, you to sit in this space of surrender. So I wanna invite you to close your eyes now. I'm just gonna read the Lord's Prayer over us and let that sit with you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be Your name. Your kingdom come. 
and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I wanna invite you to come. There's tables at the front and there's tables at the back as well. So come now, grab the bread, grab the juice and take them back to your seat. You might wanna sit with those around you. You might wanna sit by yourself and in that space of gratitude and surrender, just listen to the Lord and what He might be saying to you. So why don't you come now?
mercy fills the streets to look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity. There will be a day when all will bow before him. There will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with him who died and rose again. you glory we give you the highest praise we recognize that you are the one who gives us life and life to the full both now and forever and we proclaim your greatness your majesty your power and your worth with everything that we have everything that we are we praise you amen just uh, continue to stand if you can if you're able this morning we're just gonna spend some time praying for some of our family. Uh, a lot of you guys know Janine, who is uh, one of our great Gateway Beyond workers. Uh, and she's been in the Middle East for a very long time serving God over there. Last week, she was involved in a bus, bus accident in Tanzania. 
Uh, and she is mostly okay, but sadly 25 people lost their lives. And 11 of those people were her close friends and her YWAM team. And Janine obviously being on that bus was a first responder and in that moment of tragedy and is now wrestling with it for what it is for her future as well. And our heart breaks for Janine. Our heart breaks for those people who have experienced that tragedy. And uh, I'm just gonna invite us all as their church family to pray for them right now. So if you'd like to join me, let's just close our eyes and loving Father, we just recognize the immense sadness that Janine particularly must be going through. Well, we don't understand all of everything that goes on, but God, we know that you are in the presence of Janine right now as she uh, comes to grips with the grief and with the trauma and with the tragedy. God, you are with her. And God, I pray your comfort over her. Holy Spirit, would you just let her know right now even of your presence with her, the way that you are walking with her. God, I pray for just a strength to face every day. Lord, we pray for all the people impacted by this tragedy. God, we recognize and thank you that so many of those people had faith in you, Jesus, as their Lord and Savior. And there is hope that we will one day see them again in a resurrected body. But God, there's uh, a lot of mourning on this side of it. A lot of people who will miss their friends and their family, their loved ones. And God, I pray that you would be with them and they would recognize your grace and your love towards them in these tough times. God, help us as a community also to love and to care for uh, all of those who are impacted by this tragedy. By, for Janine, uh, for Eleanor, and for all of our YWAM friends, God, help us to be a community that gets along beside them and shines your light and your love into their world in this tough time. Amen. Amen. I encourage you, if you, uh, if you know anybody affiliated with YWAM at this time, be reaching out to them. Just let them know that they have your love and your support. Uh, I'm sure that they all need it. I'm gonna invite you to take a seat right now. Hey, uh, if we don't know each other, my name is Mark. I'm the Gateway Online Campus Pastor. And I just recognize that as we've started 2024, 20, I've been walking with a lot of my campus in some really tough times. And I recognize for a lot of you at the same time, you're walking through some tough times. And I just want you to know that there are people here who would love to pray for you, both in a service here on a Sunday and also during the week. And you can let us know how we can be praying for you uh, via the website, or you can scan the QR code that's in front of you right now. And we would love to be praying for you. We have teams of people that love to lift you up and your um, the, the issues that you're going through just to Jesus and... and uh, we're praying for breakthrough. We're in this season of prayer and fasting and we're praying for breakthrough for so many things. And we know that prayer is powerful. We are seeing God move in incredible ways and we'd love to be continuing to pray with you. So please don't hesitate. This is family and we'd love to be praying for you. I just wanna also welcome you here because it's gonna be a great day of church, uh, but also if you are here for the first time, everybody who comes to Gateway is welcome. And if you are new here, we would love to get to know you, get to know you a little bit better. And you can do that if you're here in the room at McKenzie, you can see somebody at the new here desk after the service and they'd love to say hi to you. Or if you're a little bit more shy or if you're online, you can scan the QR code that's in front of you and just say, hey, I'm new. And we would love to contact you during the week. Just get to know you and uh, say hi, help you to plug into any aspect of church life that you might want to plug into. And that's a really important part of who we are as a church is coming together as a community and doing life together. So please do that if you're new, uh, either in the new here desk or scan the QR code. You can scan that QR code at any point. And I encourage you, if you've been here for one year or for 10 years right now, to get out your phone and scan that QR code and just find out what's happening in the life of the church. And I just want to highlight a couple of those things for you today. Uh, coming up this Saturday, 
On the 9th of March, we have International Women's Day and we're hosting a wonderful women's breakfast here at Gateway. And the theme is called Inspire Inclusion. It's going to be a great opportunity for you ladies to uh, invite the people that you hang out with, the people that you live and work and laugh with, uh, and just find a place to connect and belong. And so if you're here at McKenzie, you can, on your way out, see one of the welcome team. They've got a card with a QR code on it that you can register. You've only got two more days to register. So don't delay. Get on it. You can even do that right now. Scan that QR code either on the screen or in, uh, in the, on the pew in front of you and just even just grab a ticket for your friend and say, hey, you're coming with me on Saturday morning, 8.30. We're going to meet at McKenzie. It's going to be a great time together. And so please do that. The other thing I want to let you know about is... 21 days of prayer and fasting. We're halfway, almost halfway through. We're a third of the way through, if, if we're actually mathematically correct. Uh, and I don't know how you've gone this week. I've enjoyed it, and I've also had some difficult times of fasting as well. Um, but I've also heard God speak to me in ways that were unexpected, and I hope you have too. I've heard a bunch of stories from people uh, all across the board of surprising ways that God has been speaking to them, moving in their lives over this last week. And we've still got two more weeks of this left. And I just want to remind you about a couple of things that you can do to continue to engage in that. Tomorrow night, we have a night here of prayer for healing at McKenzie. And so if you're able to get along, get along, whether you're online or uh, online locally or here at McKenzie. Get here to McKenzie. Uh, if you've got something you need healing for, and I know that there are a whole bunch of you that need healing either physically, spiritually, emotionally, come along. We'd love to see you here, and we'd love to, a whole bunch of you here to pray for people as well. You might even th um, have a gift of healing. You might have a gift of words of knowledge. Uh, you might have a gift of prayer. Please come along. We're going to need people to be praying for people for healing. Uh, tomorrow night. Details are on the website, uh, gatewaybaptist.com.au forward slash 21. We also, starting next Sunday, have a week of 24-7 prayer. So as a church, we're hoping to fill every single hour of that week, all 168 of them, with people praying. Okay, so we're going to need you. And so you can register for that by, again, scanning that QR code, jumping on the website. It's very, very simple. You just click on the day, click on the AM or PM, and select a time, and uh, you can fill in your details if you like as well. And as you do that, we'll send you some resources to help you pray for that one hour. But you might be a trucker. You might be up at three o'clock in the morning, say, that's when I can pray. You might be a parent. You go, oh, I can do it after the kids go to bed. That's when I can pray. Pick your time. You might want to pray by yourself. You might want to pray with uh, your family or a bunch of people around you. Register now. Fill in, that, uh, fill in that registration to be part of the 24-7 prayer. We also have a number of opportunities in every single campus to gather that week. And if you're here at McKenzie, that's Tuesday. Again, details are on the website. If you're online, it's Saturday. And so there's a bunch of things that you can do on those days uh, to be involved with the 24-7 uh, week uh, prayer and fasting. The last thing I want to let you know about for that week is culminating this whole season, we're going to finish in every single campus with unified prayer. Every campus gathering at 5 p.m. on the 17th of March. So make sure you come along to that. It's going to look different to a normal 5 p.m. service. It's going to be a great way to lean into what God has been saying and is saying and is doing. So please come along to that. Sound good? All information on that QR code. Get your phone out. Scan it now. It's going to be good. Hey, uh, we are going to release our youth in a moment to head up to YC. But just before we do that, I just wanted to uh, pray for our giving as well. And if you are a part of Gateway, if this is your home where you belong, I encourage you to give how God is calling you to give. But if this is your first time with us, if you're new here, please don't feel compelled to give. This is just for people who belong to Gateway. Um, but yeah, why don't we pray as we prepare our hearts, right? Lord, I just thank you for your heart of generosity, God. I thank you that you are the one who provides. You provide in so many areas of our lives. And God, just as we prepare our hearts to give back to you and to sow into your kingdom, uh, God, I just want to lift up the youth. 
Lord, I thank you uh, that they are here, and I thank you that they have found uh, a group of people that love and support them. God, I pray that as they get up and they walk up to the loft, God, that you would be preparing their hearts to hear what you're going to say to them individually. God, I pray that you would encourage them, God. I pray that you would raise them up to be uh, wonderful young men and women who just love you, who just want to walk in you. God, expand their vision of who you are. Expand their hearts for you as well. God, help them to also find more and more friends who are going to gather around them and encourage them in life and faith as they uh, transition through school and into young adulthood. Lord, I thank you for the way that you're working in their lives and working in that YC ministry, God. I pray that you would continue uh, to grow all of those. Amen. Amen. There's a bunch of ways that you can give. Uh, you can find that on the screen behind me or also on that QR code. Let's stand to our feet. I know, it's just so hard, isn't it? Man, I mean, I'm 40 in a couple of months and I'm feeling it hard already. Why don't you turn around to somebody right now, say good day to them and uh, welcome them to church this morning. Why well, see, it's your chance to run up to the loft. Enjoy. G'day, hey, Gateway Gavin, Online. Great to have you guys with us today. Absolutely. Hey, and if you haven't already, why don't you jump in the chat, say hi, let us know you're there. We've got Andrea and Annette hosting. And Wonderful hosts. A, a great community on there. They'd love to welcome you into. Absolutely. It's been great seeing a bunch of faces online this morning. You might have heard me talk about the ways you can jump into 24-7 prayer and all the other stuff. I want to encourage you to do that. Register your name. It's going to be important that Gateway Online yeah. uh, lends their support to 24-7 prayer to fill up those hours of praying. Yeah, and it's going to be a great time. Just trusting that as we give God that time, that He is going to work in wonderful ways that we might not even uh, be able to conceptualize right now, but I think He's going to surprise us, and I'm Absolutely. excited for it. Yeah, so you can go to gatewaybaptist.com.au forward slash 21 for all the details on all the ways that you can be praying over the next couple of weeks as we wrap this up. But yeah, it's going to be great. It is going to be good. And tomorrow night, you heard Mark talk about uh, the night of prayer for healing. And if you are local to the uh, Mackenzie area here in Brisbane, then we want to invite you into that space. If that's something that you require healing, you just want to ask God for healing, or whether you just feel like you can lend your faith mm. and pray for others, please feel free to come along. If you're a uh, further distance away, you can just engage in prayer anytime. You can send an email to online at gatewaybaptist.com.au. And we always want to stand with you and pray for you as well. Absolutely. I know there's a bunch of you already planning on coming tomorrow night, which so I think good. is really, really wonderful. Hey, we got Lauren Lucas, who's going to bring a message for us in a second. I've heard a little bit of Lauren talk yeah, this week as she's good. unpacked her message with us. And it's a great message. And I hope that uh, you glean a lot from it. Yeah. So lean your hearts into what Lauren has for you to say, what she's got on her heart for you this week. It's good. Take care, guys. See you later. you to wrap up those conversations, grab a seat, make sure you continue those after our service. Though, we don't want you to uh, cut it short, so just pause it for a moment and uh, make sure you keep connecting after the service, because that will be fantastic. Lots of conversations happening today, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. If we haven't met yet, my name is Lauren and I'm the Young Adults Pastor here at our Mackenzie campus. And I uh, hope that you've been able to engage in our 21 days of prayer and fasting in some way this week. If you haven't yet, it's not too late to join in. Maybe you feel like God is uh, calling you to be a part of it. You can still join us. Maybe you want to just fast one day in this week. Maybe you want to fast one meal every day over the next two weeks. Or maybe for you, it's not food related at all. But as a church, we want to hunger after God. We long to know and experience more of who God is. And so I want to encourage you to engage with those opportunities that are coming this week and next week where we get together as the church, the night of prayer for healing tomorrow night, and then the following week with 24-7 prayer. Because God is on the move. 
I uh, had the privilege of being here on Wednesday with over 100 young adults who uh, were just being encouraged and equipped in sharing their faith with their friends. There is a burning passion and desire in them, not just to keep the good news of Jesus to themselves, but to share it. God is on the move, and it's exciting as a church to be a part of that. Today, we continue our teaching series in Magnify and Multiply. And as followers of Jesus, we have been entrusted with something that if we choose to invest it, we'll multiply the ministry of Jesus and bring God's kingdom, his kingdom that is in heaven, here today on earth. And so as we open up God's word together, I believe God has what I like to call a bit of a compliment sandwich for us. You know how when you have to deliver some feedback and there's something encouraging, something challenging, you start with the encouragement slip a slice of challenge in there and finish it with encouragement, we might find that's what we have today. But we're gonna jump into the gospel of Matthew. We're gonna be in one of Jesus' parables. And it's going to, as we go through it in some different sections, it's going to prompt us to ask ourselves three questions. And I'm trusting that God will speak to us today in the way that he only knows that we need it. So that as his church, we can continue to bring the kingdom that is in heaven here today on earth by faithfully investing what God has entrusted to us. Can I pray for us before we open God's word? Let's pray. God, we thank you that by your spirit you are here. And God, we want to hear from you today. God, we want to understand more of who you are and more of who you have created us to be. So we pray against distraction. We pray against those things that might just have our mind wandering and we pray that you would help us. God, focus on you today and be open to what it is you want to say to us as individuals, but what you want to say to us as your church. Thank you that we have this opportunity. We commit it to you, God. Amen. Amen. So if you've got your Bibles, I want you to take them out and turn with me to Matthew 25. We're going to start in verse 14. And this is titled in my Bible, the parable of the bags of gold. Now, as you enter into a parable, it's useful to identify which of the characters in that parable is going to help us understand more of who God is and which of the characters is going to help us understand more of the position that we are in. And in this parable, we enter in and there is a master and some servants. The master is God and we are most likely the servants. And so we're going to start in verse 14. Again, It will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. We're going to stop there. Now this parable starts with that word again. And that implies to us that this is actually a reiteration of something that's already been talked about. And the gospel writer Matthew has placed this parable in a series of teachings where Jesus is responding to the disciples' question around the destruction of the temple and the signs of the end of the age. And although there has been and will probably continue to be much debate around how and when the end times will play out. One thing we can be assured of today is that we stand in a moment of time between when Jesus lived and when Jesus is coming again. And what these parables and these teachings do is that they highlight to us the importance of being ready, the importance of walking in faithfulness so that at whatever point the end does come, Jesus' followers, we're not left like a deer in the headlights, unprepared, but we are ready. We are prepared and we have done what God has asked us to do. It says, again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his service servants and entrusted his wealth to them. So the master, he takes 
what is of value to him and he entrusts it, he gives it to his servants. In, in the NIV, the wealth that he talks about is bags of gold. In other translations, it's talents, which is not necessarily our talents and skills, but a, a weight, a large unit of money. And there is some confusion as we read this today over what Jesus actually means when he's referring to bags of gold. Some think it represents the God-given gifts, these skills, abilities. Others say it's the gift of mercy and grace we've received in salvation. What I can be assured of, it's not actual bags of gold because I don't have any. Didn't look like you were walking in with any today either. But today as we consider the wealth that God has entrusted to us, I would love to invite us to think about it this way. In the first chapter of Genesis, we read that God created humanity in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, it tells us. We all bear some resemblance to our creator God. And we see this idea most simply when people have kids. You see their parents, the ones who've created them, and there is this resemblance between the parent and the child. They don't exactly look like them, but there's a part of them where you might see them do something and you're like, oh, that's just like your mom. Or you might look at them and you can see the resemblance of their dad. As we consider the wealth that God has entrusted to us, I would love for us to consider the part of our makeup, our personality, our gifting, our skill that we have received from God that actually reflects the heart of God. Maybe it'll help you understand it better this way. Most of my adult life, I've had what many think is an unusual and sometimes strange ability to meet strangers and uh, not just introduce myself to them, but get to know them. My heart is drawn to the person by themselves. I am drawn to people and I want to get to know them and understand their story. I'm that person who hops on a plane and I am genuinely excited to find out the life story of the person sitting next to me. I get disappointed when I get on the plane and they already have headphones in because I've learnt that means they don't want to talk to me. But my friends and family think I'm a little strange. But what I've learned is that this desire, this gifting, it's not random, it's not coincidental. I believe this is part of the heart of God that has been given to me. See, God has a heart for the isolated. He has a heart for those on the fringes. And we see throughout scripture that his heart is to care for and provide for the stranger. And the more that I've grown in my understanding of who God is, the more I have seen part of the wealth, part of the heart of God that he has entrusted to me. And so the first question that this parable prompts us to ask ourselves is what has God entrusted to you? What has God entrusted to you? It might be easy to first start to think about this around the idea of what are you good at? What do you actually like to do? The other thing I find it easy to help you articulate is what do you find yourself doing despite the different contexts that you're in? You just kind of can't help yourself, but you find yourself doing it all the time. You may need to go beyond just a skill and start to look at the heart posture behind why you do what you do. What is the wealth of God? What is the heart of God that he has entrusted to you? Maybe you have God's heart for justice. And when you see an injustice occur, you know you have to step in and try and bring justice into that situation. Maybe you have God's heart to see people heal and made whole. And you find yourself in a profession that actually helps people come to a place of physical healing, but your heart is for more than just them to find physical healing. Your heart is for them to be healed in mind, body, and soul. Maybe you have God's heart of generosity and you actually find yourself giving things to other people at, either out of your place of plenty or even from your place of the little that you have. You just constantly want to bless other people. 
What is it that God has entrusted to you? In verse 15, it says, to one he gave five bags, to one he gave two bags, to another one bag, each according to his ability. God distributes this wealth according to the abilities and the skills that he's given us. And I believe there is a reminder in that for us as to how well God knows us. See, this master, he is not distant and far off. This master knows the abilities of each of his servants. And so he doesn't distribute distribute this wealth flippantly or unknowingly. He distributes it with the knowledge of each and every servant, knowing what is in their capacity to carry and knowing what is in their capacity to invest. And I actually wonder if there are a number of people here today who actually just need that reminder. Maybe right now you just feel overwhelmed at what is in front of you. Maybe even that God-given opportunity that is right in front of you. And you don't know how you're going to step into it. I believe God might want to remind you today, he knows the capacity you have. He has not given you an opportunity that he won't equip you for. We're gonna keep reading now in verse 16. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. And this prompts us to ask ourselves a second question. And that question is, what are you doing with what God has entrusted to you? Because whether we like it or not, we're all doing something. The five bag and the two bag servant, they put their money to work. But the one bag servant digs a hole and hides it in the ground. I think it's interesting to note here that a hole in the ground was actually considered a safe place to put something in the ancient world. Some think there is a reference here to the Pharisees, the one who have been given the responsibility of the law, and they are actually inclined to do what is safe. They want things to stay the same. They want a religion without change or risk. But if you know anything about the Pharisees and the disciples, the Pharisees like to play it safe. But the disciples, they risked everything to follow Jesus. And we see a similarity in the five and the two bag servant. They are willing to take a risk, to step out, not knowing the outcome, but willing to take the risk for the benefit of the master. And when we follow Jesus, we are not promised safety. We are not promised comfort. Following Jesus is all about taking a risk with what we've been given, all for the sake of God's kingdom. We continue in verse 19. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold bought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. See, even though they had been entrusted with different amounts, the five bag and the two bag servant, they actually received the same reward. They receive the same encouragement. And I wonder if there's a reminder in that for us today not to compare what we've been given with others. It can be so easy to look around us, to look to what others have been entrusted with and think to ourselves, you know, well, if I had five bags, maybe I would have done that with five bags. Or look to someone and you go, actually, I'd love to have two bags. God knows you and he has given you something unique, knowing your capacity to invest it. 
But so often we let comparison distract us from investing what God has entrusted to us because we're too busy trying to work out what other people have and why we don't have that. And I know for me, this is where I start to relate a little bit to the one bag servant because I want to be the good and faithful servant, but sometimes being the good and faithful servant feels a bit too hard. Sometimes it feels easier just to go and bury it in the ground and take the safe option. But we're gonna read what happens to the one bag servant. It says in verse 24, then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seeds. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. There is a different outcome for the one bag servant. And I don't think it has anything to do with the amount that he was given. It has everything to do with what he did with what he was given. And this leads us to ask a final question, one that I don't actually take, take much joy in asking us today. This is the slice of challenge that might just get slipped in here. And the question is, what is God saying to you today? Imagine, you're standing in front of the master, you are the servant, and the master is taking account of what you've done with what he's given you up until today, what would he say? Now remember, our God is loving, our God is kind, but our God continually uses things to refine us to become the people he created us to be. The master here says to his servant, you wicked, lazy servant. Maybe today you feel like God might say to you, actually see you've become distracted. You've been consumed with the things of this world that you actually have forgotten to invest what I've entrusted to you. Maybe God would say to you, I can see you're exhausted. I know the efforts that you go to to try and carry all these different things, but you're carrying more than I ever asked you to carry. Maybe God would say, I can see that fear and worry have stopped you from stepping out in the God-given opportunities I've given you. Or maybe today you get the sense that God is saying, I see your steps of faith. I see the risks that you've taken despite the fear and the uncertainty and you feel like God would say to you today, well done, good and faithful servant. My guess is that if you're a follower of Jesus, your hope is that one day, whenever the master does return from his long journey, you want to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. And so I think we can actually learn some lessons from the one bag servant on how to try and go on this journey of continuing to be a good and faithful servant. And there's three things that stand out to me about the one bag servant that I think will help us as we continue to do that. And the first thing we see is that the one bag servant, he knew the master. He knew the master, but he didn't let that change what he did. See, sometimes we think our knowledge of God is enough. If we can just know more about God, that's enough. But this parable shows us that knowledge is not enough to help us live the life that God is calling us to. The master says, if you really knew me, then you would have known putting that money on deposit and earning interest would have been better. 
See, if we just go through the motions of being a Christian, of coming to church, of occasionally reading our Bible, but we don't let it change our behavior, we don't let it affect the choices that we make, we're not being faithful to all that God is calling us to. We need to make sure the knowledge, the information that we learn about God doesn't just stay in our heads, but it moves to our hearts and it transforms us into Christ's likeness. Do not just be informed, be transformed. That's the first lesson we learn from the one bag servant. The second lesson is fear stopped him from stepping out. How often has fear stopped you from taking an opportunity? We have a fear of failure. We have a fear of what other people think. We have a fear that maybe I'm not up to what it is that God is calling me to do. I heard once that courage, courage isn't the absence of fear. Courage is actually pressing on in the face of fear. And those who step out in faith, it's not that they don't experience fear. They just don't let fear stop them from taking that step. And I love the the verses that we continually hear in the book of Joshua. When the Lord says to Joshua and the Israelites, he says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And I love the picture this creates, that the presence of God can help us not be afraid. I saw this play out a couple of years ago when one of my kids called me into their rooms in the middle of the night as a storm was coming. And this child used to be quite scared of storms and so they would wake up. And I came in into their room and I said, what can I do to help? And they said, I just need you to sit on the end of my bed. And where before they had struggled to go back to sleep, as soon as I was was in their presence, as soon as I was there, they just dropped straight off to sleep. Nothing had changed except the presence of their parent was with them. And I wonder whether some of us need to be reminded that God is with us. And because our God is with us, we don't have to be afraid. I know there have been moments in my life where I have given in to fear. It stopped me taking opportunities that were before me, but there's been other moments where I've pressed on in the face of fear, knowing that God would be with me. And what I've learned is that more I choose to press on in the face of fear, the easier it gets. That first time you step into an opportunity, even though you're afraid, it's hard. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. Don't let fear stop you taking a step of faith. If we look back to the creation account that I referred to earlier, there is actually this fascinating interaction between fear and hiding. Adam and Eve, they eat the fruit that God told them not to. Their eyes are both open. They realize they are naked. And we're gonna pick up a couple of verses in uh, verse eight. This is Genesis chapter three. Then the man and his wife heard the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And I think this is where we see this type of fear originate. And this was never part of God's original plan. It is a result of our eyes being open, the awareness of now our vulnerability. And because of this fear, humanity in some way has been hiding who God created us to be ever since. The fear caused Adam and Eve to hide themselves from God. Fear caused this servant in the parable to take what was entrusted to him and hide it. What has fear caused you to hide? Don't let the enemy take any more ground. Don't hide what's been entrusted to you. He uses fear. 
He uses past hurts. He uses doubt and disbelief that God would possibly want to use us, that God could possibly entrust us with something. Don't hide what God has entrusted to you. Invest it. What is it that God's entrusted to you? And how are you investing it? I believe that first we have to identify the wealth that has been entrusted to us because we can't invest it if we don't know what it is. But the next step is knowing what investing it actually looks like. And sometimes there are these God-given opportunities that somehow just kind of miraculously appear in our lives. I know that happened for our family. A number of years ago, very much out of the blue, someone got in contact with us and said, hey, there's this opportunity to move your family and go and open up the house that you're living in and pretty much just invite strangers to come and live with you and love on them. And when I heard that, there was something in my heart that knew that that was part of what God had entrusted to me. And so while there was much fear about, one, moving our entire family to another country, two, the risks that it had in, with having strangers come and live with our young family, there was something in me that I knew this was a God-given opportunity. And I had to continue to press on in, even in the presence of the fear. And God, we saw God do amazing things as we stepped out in faith. So sometimes the opportunity to invest comes in these somewhat miraculous opportunities. But other times, I actually think it just takes us doing a bit of trial and error. I know for me, I have learned so much about what God has entrusted to me through serving in a whole bunch of different areas of this church. Over the years, I've served in kids and youth, young adults, mission, worship, and all of these opportunities have helped me build a greater understanding of what God has entrusted to me. And it's led me to the point where I am today where I get to invest that in helping young adults come to know more about Jesus. And as we work out what God has entrusted to us and we find opportunities to invest that, whether that's those miraculous opportunities or just being faithful to the opportunity in front of us. We get the chance to bring the kingdom of God to earth today. And there's a whole bunch of different ways we can invest that depending on the season of life you're in and the place that God has you in this season. And so I encourage you, to invest, because as we invest what God has entrusted to us, earth will start to look a little bit more like heaven. It can happen here in our church. It happens out there in our world. And maybe the next step for you is actually investing what God has given you here in our church. There are a whole bunch of opportunities to do that. The challenge sometimes of being in a large church is you look at the opportunities and you think all the opportunities are covered. Let me let you in on a little secret. They're not. There are so many opportunities for you to invest what God has entrusted to you. And I could tell you about all of them, but we would be here for a very long time, so I'm just gonna tell you about three opportunities. And as I say them, you might actually find that one starts to resonate with you. Our Beyond Cafe is open every Sunday after our eight and 10 services. It's a place where people get to connect, place where people get to meet some friends. You might have a heart to help foster places of connection. Maybe you have a gift of hospitality. Maybe you just love serving people. There are many opportunities out in our Beyond Cafe. If that resonates with you, scan the QR code, press next steps, follow the prompts down and let us know. We mentioned before YC as they went out. Our youth church on a Sunday, both in our eight and 10 services, there's an opportunity for you to come and to invest in the lives of young people. It's getting to know them, it's helping them connect with each other and just facilitating some conversations around faith and life. There's a bunch of opportunities in our youth church. There's also a bunch of opportunities 
uh, on Friday nights in our kids' ministry. We've launched something new this year called Kids' Night Out. It's three times a term. And it's an opportunity for kids in year three to six to come along, to bring their friends. This Friday night just gone, we had about 10 new families come along who'd never been to church before. You get, the kids get to hang out, play. So there's opportunities to serve with the kids. But there's also, we gather together for dinner as families afterwards. There's opportunities to help serve dinner. They are just three of the many opportunities in our church. If you feel like the next step for you is investing what God is giving you in to help build our church, make sure you let us know. We'd love to help get you plugged in. But for others, maybe your next step is investing what God has entrusted to you in that specific place that God has you. And the opportunities there are endless. The opportunities in the season of life that you are in right now, there are so many. And it's discerning which one God is prompting you to do. You heard last week Nikki talk about RI, opportunity to go into schools, share the good news of Jesus. Maybe right now you just have some time on your hands. Maybe for this season, God's placed you specifically next to someone that you work with. And you need to invest into them what God has entrusted to you. Maybe it just happens to be you're living in a certain place at the moment and God has you turning up to a certain supermarket regularly and you have the opportunity just to show love and grace to a particular people that you happen to see every week. Maybe you see them more than your friends because you're there more than you have the time to catch up with your friends. The opportunities are endless. But what is God entrusted you with and how are you investing it? Because as we invest, we get to be part of helping God build the church. We get to be part of bringing God's kingdom, the kingdom of God to earth today. And if we are to multiply the ministry of Jesus, if we are going to be people who take part in bringing the kingdom that is in heaven here today on earth, we're going to have to take some steps of faith. We're gonna have to take some risks and invest what God has entrusted to us. And what does this kingdom of God look like? It's where the lost find hope. It's where the outcast feels welcome. It's where the lonely find home. It's where the broken find healing. It's where those who have gone without are blessed from those who have plenty. This is the kingdom of God. The kingdom that we get to be a part of bringing to earth today, if we will take the risk and keep investing what God has entrusted to us. And today as we finish up, I just want to invite all of us to stand together and we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer, the same prayer that Eden prayed over us in communion. Come on, stand to your feet. And what I love about this prayer, there's that line, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is our prayer. We want to see God's kingdom come to earth. But the other parts of the Lord's Prayer actually help us sometimes move beyond some of the things that inhibit us from doing that. And so as we close today, we're gonna pray this out loud together. It's on the screen so you can join in. If you're online, make sure you stand too. We'd love you to join in. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. God, we thank you that by your spirit, you are here. And God, I trust that you are speaking by your spirit to each person here about what it is you have entrusted them with and where they are to invest it. God, continue by your spirit to encourage our hearts, continue to bring challenge where you need to bring challenge Continue to help us just be aware of God, what you are doing in this moment. Let us take 
these next few moments, God, as we get to be the church together for just a little bit longer, to encourage, to pray for each other, God. Thank you, God. Amen. I'm gonna invite the prayer team to come out the front now because as we uh, sing out our last song for today, I actually wonder where there are just some people who would like some prayer. They actually feel like there are some opportunities in front of them. Maybe have, you have actually a knowledge of what God's entrusted you, but uh, there's two words just have come to my mind and I feel like God would love us to pray for some people today who just need some courage. You need courage to keep pressing on in the face of fear. Maybe you have found fear crippling in the past. Maybe you just feel particular fear at this one opportunity that's ahead of you. I believe God would want to fill you with courage today. The other thing I feel, uh, just a word God put on my heart, is capacity. I reckon there's a bunch of us here today who feel like we are at capacity. I actually think this is a weird thing to pray, but someone just prompted it to me a couple of weeks ago. Our God can actually increase our capacity if we need Him to. And where we can look at maybe even our calendar and think, I don't even know how that's gonna fit. Our God can make a way. And so I think there's just some people here this morning who you just know that what is before you You just need courage or you need capacity. Courage and capacity. If that's you, as we just sing today, as we just ask that the Spirit of God continue to come and do what He needs to do. Come, because I know these guys would love to pray for you, love to stand in the gap with you. So let's sing. Spirit of the living God, fall on us now. With your holiness, mercy, and power, send us out in the love of our God. Send us out. 
do just ask that your Spirit would continue to fill us. Spirit, equip us with everything that we need to do what it is you're calling us to do. God, where fear has stopped us in the past, God, we pray against that. We pray that a renewed knowledge of your presence with us would help cast out fear and help us step into all that you have for us. God, give us eyes to see this week the opportunities that are in front of us. God, I pray that we would not be too busy or too distracted to see what you are up to in our days. God, continue to help us be aware of your Spirit's leading each and every moment. God, help us to continue to walk in faithfulness to what you're calling us to do. God, and may we start to see your kingdom come more on earth as it is in heaven. God, that is what we long to see. We long to see those who are far from you find hope. We long to see those who are hurt find healing. God, come. We want more of you, God. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. We are so glad you were able to make it to church. I encourage you to come along to our night of prayer for healing tomorrow night. Continue pressing in to our season of prayer and fasting and we will see you soon.